Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Last week, we took a look at the new emergency email server that I built, and I promised you guys that I would release that code, so let's take a look at getting that installed today. Now, I am going to make a couple of assumptions uh, before doing this video. I'm going to assume that you have PatWinLink installed, configured, and working on your setup. And I'm going to assume that you have your Pi set up so that it will generate a hotspot when it's not connected to another network. I've covered both of those on my channel previously, so if you don't have that, you might want to pause this video, go watch the other videos, and then come back and tackle this one. All right, so let's jump right into it. First, let's run a quick update to make sure we get the latest packages. So sudo app get update and go ahead and hit return. Once that's finished, let's go ahead and install the web server. So for that, we'll use sudo app get install dash y apache 2. Once that finishes up, let's go ahead and install PHP with sudo app get install dash y php 7.0 and I'll leave these commands down in the description below in case you miss something as it's getting typed out on the screen. Now that that's finished, let's just go ahead and clear the screen and we're going to move to the downloads directory with cd space downloads. Let's head over to the website so we can grab the download link. I'll leave a link to this website down in the description below. We want to come right over here where it says clone or download. We're going to click on that and then we're going to right click where it says download zip and say copy the link location. Inside our downloads directory, let's use the wget command and paste in the link that we just copied from the website. Once the download is complete, let's say unzip master.zip. Clear out our screen and let's list out our folder here. Next, we need to copy the files to their correct location. So sudo cp r ees light master forward slash star space and then it'll be var www.html and a forward slash at the end. Okay, after we've done that, let's move to our HTML directory. So cd var www.html. Let's list out that directory and you can see that we have our files there. All right, we need to make one of our files executable, so we'll say sudo chmod plus x first run. And then let's run that with sudo dot forward slash first run. And the last thing we want to run now is dot forward slash schedule. Now you may see this feedback here that says no cron tab uh, for Pi. Uh, what we're doing with the previous command is scheduling something in cron tab. And if you haven't used that previously, you will see this. If you already have cron jobs installed, you would not see this. It would just add a new line to the bottom of your cron job. Okay, so we're going to leave this here and let's go ahead and open up the web browser. And let's enter 127.0.0.1 forward slash email dot php. Now the 127.001, if you don't know, that's just a loopback address. So it's just calling, the Raspberry Pi is calling itself basically with that address. We'll show you how to do it uh, from another computer here in just a few minutes. All right, so now you can see that the server is set up. Uh, but right here it says no call. So that's one of the things we need to replace. 
All right, so there's one other thing I need to show you guys real quick. We're going to open another tab. This time it's 127.0.0.1 forward slash reply hyphen input dot PHP. Now, when you first type that in and you hit return, you're going to come up to the login screen here. The default username and password is admin. We'll go ahead and click login, and then it'll take us to the reply input page. You'll notice this right here. I'll show you guys in just a second how to change that to something else or get rid of it entirely. All right, let's jump back to our terminal window. In the terminal window, you should still be in the HTML directory. So let's go sudo nano config.php. Now this is where you can change several things that happen with the email server. Everything is spelled out here. Uh, the blue writing is comment, so that, that's spelled out and tells you exactly what's going on. The first thing you see is this here, the reminder for the operator to do something. That's just a note that you may want to tell yourself uh, or remind yourself to do something uh, as you're setting up this system. So, and remember that was displayed on this page right here. If you don't want that to show, then put two forward slashes in front of that line and that comments it out and nothing will show there. On the, the next line down is the login. So remember we used admin admin. You can change this to whatever you would like for it to be. When you change it, make sure you leave the single quotes that's on each side of the word admin. So that's your login there. Below that is your password. Next line down is where you want to enter your call sign. So we're going to take out no call and I'm going to go ahead and enter my call sign. All right, okay. so after you've entered your call sign, the next the uh, next thing we can set here is whether replies are allowed into the system or not. So uh, by default, they are allowed. If you didn't want to allow replies into the system, you would change this to zero. The next two things here are appended to the bottom of each email that a user will generate. Uh, so the first one here is appended if replies are allowed into the system. And that is set right here with either a one or a zero. So if replies are allowed into the system, this is what's going to be added to the bottom of each email. If replies are not allowed into the system, it's going to grab this here and put it at the bottom of each email. Now you can change that up to be whatever you want, uh, but, but it's something is here so that you kind of get a feel for where things are going. All right, below that uh, is what's called the visit message. And this is something uh, that is displayed after a user submits an email. It tells them uh, that their email to whoever it was addressed to has been queued for sending. And then it displays this message here. Uh, once reviewed, it will be sent over the air using amateur radio. Again, you can change that to whatever you would like for it to say. And the last thing here is the text subject. So in emails, they can kind of put what they want to in the subject line uh, before it goes out. Text messages are a little bit different and we choose what the subject line is for a text message that's getting sent out. So you can change this to whatever you want. When I demoed this on field day last year, I put something like uh, field day 2018 test. Uh, so you can change that to suit whatever needs you have. And that's all there is for the configuration file. When you're done with it, let's press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out. Now, if we go back in and we take a look at one of our pages and hit the refresh button, You'll see that now my call sign is up here, and because we commented out that reminder, this went away here. Same thing on the email page. If we hit the refresh button here, you'll see that now my call sign is right up there at the top. So it's quick and easy to change your call sign out, uh, put yours in, and it populates across all of the pages. Okay, so let's take a look at connecting to this uh, from another computer or a wireless device. You'll notice right here at the top of the screen, 
This is the IP address of my Pi. So let's go ahead and head over to my Mac's web browser. All right, we'll just go ahead and open up a new tab and we'll say 10.3.35.106. That was the address we had forward slash and then the email.php. So this is the address that you would want to direct your end users to once they connected to your Raspberry Pi's hotspot. As an operator, you're going to want 10.3.35.106. Now, obviously, the IP of your Raspberry Pi is going to be different than mine, so you'll have to substitute your own IP address here. Everything that follows the forward slash will be the same. So next, we want reply hyphen input dot php. And I'll leave this down in the description below. When you first go into it, again, it's going to give you the login. So we'll just, we didn't change the default. So we'll say admin, admin. And you're right here, ready to post a reply. The last thing you would need to get open is your PAT inbox so that you could make connections to a WinLink gateway. So again, the IP address of my Pi. And in my case, I have PAT set up on port 5000. And now I would be ready to accept messages into the system. So let's take a look at the way it works really fast. The end user uses their wireless device. Now that could be a cell phone, a tablet, or even a computer. And they connect to your Raspberry Pi's hotspot. Once connected, you will need to tell them the IP address that they need to go to so that they can find this page. So it would be the IP address of your Pi and then forward slash email.php. They would fill out this page. If the user has any questions, they can always click on one of these three links here to help them out. It's video tutorials. Once the page is finished, go ahead and click the send email button. They will be presented with this message queued screen. And if you remember that visit message in the configuration file, Right here is where it is displayed. Now let's take a look at the PAT outbox. Keep in mind that after you have submitted the email through the web browser, it may take it up to 60 seconds to populate into your outbox. The script only runs every 60 seconds to move it from the temporary folder to the outgoing PAT folder. Once you see the email in the outbox, you can click on it to review the message. And here's the footer that gets added to the bottom of each email. In this case, we're allowing replies back into the system so you see the appropriate footer. Once you approve the message, you can simply click the X. If for some reason you didn't approve the message, you could click Action and the Delete button. And then you're ready to go ahead and make your connection to another WinLink gateway. Okay, so now let's take a look at the inbox for a reply that has come back into the system. We would open up that reply, and then we're going to note who the message is to. We can either note that or we can copy it to paste. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and copy the message. We'll jump back to that input reply screen. And the reply is from jason at gmail.com. And then in the big box, we're going to post the actual reply and then click Post Reply. Now, when the originator of the first email wanted to check for replies, they would come back, log back into the, your system, go back to the email.php page, and click Search for Replies. Right here, they would enter the email address of the person that they were expecting the email from and click the Search button. Any replies from that email address would be displayed here. They could click on it and it would display the email. All right, guys, I hope this helps you get this service installed on your Raspberry Pi and up and running. Hopefully you never need it, but it's a good tool to have in case you do. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.